All right, let's talk a little bit more about weak acids and weak bases. And we're going to work a lot of problems in class too, so don't miss that. When you are given a weak acid, uh, a big old clue that you have a weak acid is that its name is blah blah acid, and it is not one of your strong acids which you have memorized. For example, let's say you are given a problem, and in that problem you have cyanic acid. That is not one of your strong ones, so you should recognize that's a weak one. More than likely you're going to have at your fingertips a table with ionization constants for weak acids, a Ka table. And as you scan the Ka table, you should find cyanic acid. And there you will probably be given its formula, HOCN, and an equilibrium constant for it, a Ka value. In this case, the table that I'm looking at lists 2 times 10 to the minus 4. My table also lists a pKa value, but we could also calculate pKa because it's the negative log of the Ka. I'm not going to use the pKa right now. If I need to work an equilibrium problem with cyanic acid, the very first thing I'm going to need to do is write an equilibrium reaction for it. And the equilibrium reaction for a weak acid has exactly the same format every single time. I have my weak acid. I can write well, there's, okay, there's a little bit of variation. I could write plus water with my weak acid, but I never have to. The products are the H plus, and then what's left over after the acidic hydrogen is donated, and you do have to watch your charges. In this case, the H plus is donated, and what's left over has a negative charge. So this is my equilibrium reaction for cyanic acid. At any time, I could abbreviate this, or um, I could use this. I could use this instead. This is an acceptable uh, shortcut form. This is an acceptable generic form of a weak acid reaction, and either one of these would would work. Once I get familiar with the fact that cyanic acid is HOCN, and I'm going to see a lot of these. Another thing to keep in mind is that this ion is the conjugate base of HOCN. So OCN minus is the conjugate base of cyanic acid. This OCN minus has a name. You may or may not be familiar with it. Usually it is very much similar to the name of the acid that it came from. In this case, this is called the cyanate ion. This may be one of the harder ones. You're going to find a lot of these ions that are the conjugates of the acids. They're very familiar. If I have, if I come across a problem in the homework, textbook, quiz, test, whatever, that involves the cyanate ion, then I am expected to be familiar enough with it to know that that's a base. The cyanate ion is a base because it is the conjugate base of the cyanic acid. Now the cyanic acid is a weak acid. Its conjugate base is a weak base. The conjugate base of a weak acid is a weak base. Because of the relationship between the equilibrium constants of the weak acid and the weak base, I also can say something about relative strengths. The stronger the weak acid is, the weaker the conjugate base is, and vice versa. The weaker the weak acid is, the stronger the conjugate base. Because the Ka times the Kb for my conjugate pair will always equal 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So the larger the value of Ka and the larger the equilibrium constant, the further to the right the reaction proceeds, the more hydrogen ion are produced in, K, in the terms of Ka, the stronger the acid is. So the stronger, the larger the Ka is, the stronger the weak acid is, the smaller the Kb will be, and the Kb is the equilibrium constant for the base reaction which produces hydroxide ions. So a smaller Kb implies that I get less products which means that I don't have as strong a base. So there is an inverse relationship between the strengths of the acid and the base in the conjugate pair. Um, and then we would use those, of course, in reference to something else. So again, the more you work with these, the, the sort of the more familiar with the, the words, the names that you get, 
and recognizing whether or not I'm dealing with an acid or a base. Let's do a base. If I have a weak base reaction, um, a lot. what I'm going to find as I, I look through the tables of KB values is a lot of the weak bases are similar to ammonia. Uh, if you learn nothing else in this class, you should learn that ammonia is a weak base. Ammonia, NH3, is a weak base. It reacts in water. Remember, for a weak base reaction, I cannot leave out the water. The equilibrium reaction that forms is ammonia acts like a base and accepts a proton. The water donates the proton. It's acting like the Bronsted-Lowry acid. And so I get the ammonium ion and the hydroxide ion. This is ammonia. You should know the name of ammonia. You should know the formula. This is the ammonium ion. The ammonium ion is one of the polyatomic ions you should be familiar with. Um, but, but if you're not, it should be at least familiar enough that you should know you, you could go look it up. Ammonia is a weak base. This is a weak base. Ammonium ion is its conjugate acid. So NH4 plus is the conjugate acid of ammonia. You'll notice that the names are somewhat similar. They have a similar sounding name. Ammonia has as its conjugate, ba um, uh, conjugate acid ammonium ion. If I look at some other bases on my weak base table, I notice a lot of them end in amine, like methylamine, um, hydroxylamine, so I have a lot of blah blah enes for my weak bases. Not all of them, but a lot of them. If I look at methylamine, it looks like this, and again I'm looking it up. It acts as a weak base in much the same way that ammonia does. Ammonia accepts a proton onto the nitrogen. Methylamine will accept a proton, an additional proton, onto his nitrogen. So the equilibrium reaction with methylamine forms his conjugate, which is NH3 plus, there's one extra hydrogen and the plus charge, and the hydroxide ion, OH minus. The name of this species, his conjugate acid, is the methyl ammonium ion. The methyl ammonium ion is a weak acid. It is the conjugate acid of methylamine, which is a weak base. So again, you're going to get more familiar with these the more you use them. Let's talk about a shortcut way to write our weak base reaction. Let me get a little space. Just as we have a generic way of writing the weak acid as reaction in water, we have a generic way of writing the weak base reaction in water, and that is to simply use a B for the base. Uh, it's, it's not a one-size-fits-all. There are some bases that don't quite look like it, but in general, B stands for whatever the formula of the base is. You must write plus water. You cannot leave the water out in a weak base reaction. A weak base is something that accepts a proton. It's going to accept it from the water. And so I'll end up with a BH plus and an OH minus. Any reaction that ends up with OH minus in the products is a base reaction. You're, you're looking at a, a weak base in the reactants you're looking at a KB value from your tables. Any reaction that ends up with an H plus or an H3O plus in the products, you're looking at a weak acid or an acid reaction. You're looking at an acid in the reactants, you're looking for a Ka value for your equilibrium constant. So back to our base. This is a generic way to write our weak base reaction. So instead of writing this out for ammonia, I could have simply uh, abbreviated or represented it with this reaction in terms of B. Same thing for the methylamine. If my problem involves methylamine, I can write my equilibrium reaction with a B for that would stand for the molecule of methylamine. Since Ka times Kb for a conjugate pair equal 1 times 10 to the minus 14, I do say, see the relationship we talked about a minute ago. This is the base. The BH plus would be the conjugate acid, so it would be an acid. You're going to recognize more acids, like the methyl ammonium ion is an acid. The stronger the base, the weaker the conjugate acid, and vice versa. Because again, Ka times Kb for that pair is 1 times 10 to the minus 14.